Well, hey, everybody. Looks like we're live. Hey, everyone. This is Lauren here. And uh, yes, indeed, it uh, looks like we are live. That's awesome. So we have a bunch of people on the call here. Uh, moderators, Rene in Germany, Christopher in France, Desiree in Seattle. How are you still awake, Desiree? That's amazing. Well, uh, we nap. have Terrence. We a have a nap uh, earlier. Uh, what's that? <laughs> a little nap earlier. <laughs> yeah. All right, and I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland. We'll be uh, starting on time because I'm Swiss. And if I don't start on time, uh, they don't, you know, they come to arrest me, apparently. Right now we're early, so this is just your pregame show, everyone. Yeah. It's just a banter, the, the pre-session banter. Pre-session right? <laughs> pre banter. <laughs> That's totally what we do when we are in person. We just, you know, have coffee and talk, right? True, yeah. true story. But we have, don't we have something to do for people too if they are coming here early. Like, don't we have something about rock, paper, scissors, lizards, and whatnot? We've got a link somewhere. I want to put that on the chat. Hey, you can't forget Spock. How would I ever forget Spock? There, Spock. Live long rock, and prosper. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, and Spock. There we go. Yeah, that's a great uh, that's a great game, right? It's uh, and you can play it live. So let me put that. Uh, is that? I am loving your background image. If you haven't noticed, I was dying to get on video just so I could show my coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the matching earrings, Desiree? Oh, wait. All right. I'll wait till I'm on back on camera and then I'll show you what I got going on for earrings. <laughs> All right. These are some uh, dice earrings. A little, little Millennium Falcon love there. <laughs> Thank you for noticing or asking. I figured if you had the uh, mug going, you probably had some other accessory going too. I know you better than that. Hey, I'm missing out seeing everybody in per person. I had to dress up for everyone today. For myself, really. So, Renee, I see you're on camera. Where are you joining us from today? Well, it's uh, Mars or Moon. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's been a while since I landed with that thing there. So, um, but typically, if I'm not on Moon, it would be Germany. So, um, I think we all got the big advantage of uh, of the time. It's not too late here. We just had a session where the speaker closed the session. It was like what two a.m. for him. So much yep. better here. Almost one a.m. here. Wow. <laughs> I had my 10 p.m. coffee just to be here with you all. And for everybody who's joining, we are aware that our microphone is on. We are just doing a little bit of pre-session banter. Um, thank you so much for joining. I'm Laurent Bunion and I am here in Zurich, Switzerland. We have amazing weather today. I can see snow on the mountains, um, but it's actually quite warm here. And uh, we have uh, Desiree in Seattle, we have Rene in Germany. And Rene, what, what city are you in actually? Near Munich, right? It's, if you if you take like Munich and Salzburg in Austria and you, you draw a line, it's exactly in the middle. All right. So that's the, the typical technical nerd explanation, right? Right. And who did I forget? Christopher in Paris. Are you in Paris uh, yes. proper? Yeah. Within, you are within perfect. Uh, we have Terence as well. We have uh, who did I forget? Morgan. Yes, and I'm going to do a little bit more introductions later. We are going to get started in uh, in three, two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. Morgan, you're live with us from the mothership, right? You're actually in Redmond. I am mm -hmm. in Redmond, not on campus, uh, but in Redmond. Don't get much closer to the mothership than that. You don't. I miss Seattle. I miss Redmond. I've not been in, I don't know, six months or more. I miss it. 
Hey, Laurent and I have a story. <laughs> sure. Uh -oh. We do. Uh oh. We do have a story. So, I mean, obviously, Laurent doesn't live anywhere near me. Uh, I've known him as an MVP for a while, over yes. a while ago. And um, almost 20 uh, years. Wow, <laughs> indeed. Uh, I don't know how many years ago this was, but I was in Capitol Hill. I know nobody. I'm in Seattle and Capitol Hill is the area that I live in. And I really don't know any, I've never run into anybody that I really know. I'm not from Seattle originally, um, so I never bump into anybody. And I'm literally uh, heading into an establishment that I can throw a rock from, from my house and a car's going by and the, I think, did you, I think you did you honk or wave or snagged my husband. I had, <laughs> I had literally just landed. My kids were sleeping in the back, coming from Switzerland. We were totally jet lagged, and I see Desiree walking on the street. And I think I rolled my window and I parked middle of the street and I came to hug you. Right, you were like a, a sight for sore eyes. Like, <laughs> is that the role? Like, what is going on here? Where am I? <laughs> All right, almost ready to go live. Uh, oh, I saw my slide. Say, I'm going to plug the cloud skills challenge really quick because I saw that awesome slide. Uh, if you guys don't know, um, uh, from your top navigation, you can reach the cloud skills challenge, and it's a sweepstake, uh, and you can win prizes. Wow, exciting. All right, so it's 9.45 at my clock, which is a Swiss clock, so it must be accurate. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm so excited to uh, to show you this uh, this module. And so this is, uh, you know, if you have ever wanted to work in Azure and you were always intimidated and a short personal story, I was, uh, before I joined Microsoft, I was a, a Windows development MVP. So as far from Azure, from the cloud as possible, <laughs> I was totally in, uh, you know, in, in the front end development. And uh, I, I kept thinking to myself, oh my God, I need to check this Azure thing because all my friends who are very clever, much you know, more clever than I am, are actually doing Azure and uh, and I, I really need to check it out. And I was so intimidated, I was not sure where to start. And that was before we had amazing resources like Microsoft Learn, uh, docs.microsoft.com and everything. And so today um, we are going to show you how you can get started with a, uh, with a module. This is a, an introductory module. Uh, we'll take a tour about that later, but before we do that, a little bit housekeeping. Uh, first of all, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few people on the call. And so let me uh, let me introduce them. So we have Christopher Manu. I already mentioned him. He's uh, from uh, the uh, Cloud Advocate team, so he's on my team. Uh, on well, he's a, a peer of mine. <laughs> uh, Christopher is a startups developer advocate. He's passionate about IoT, mobile development, and scuba diving. In fact, I believe Christopher, you are a scuba diver who like moonlights as a cloud advocate, I think. Uh, you do amazing work, uh, but really scuba diving is a, is a, is a passion. We have Rene Rupert, who is a senior content developer on the Microsoft Learn team, and he's uh, creating virtual instructor-led experiences based on Learn's content. Uh, we are working uh, together, uh, Rene and I, on very exciting stuff, so stay tuned. And in his spare time, he enjoys sailing the Mediterranean Sea, which is also super exciting. So you have uh, Rene on top of the sea and, and Christopher below the sea, if you if you didn't get it so far. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Lean is a cloud uh, advocate for the IT Pro team and uh, based in Scotland, I believe in Glasgow, if I'm not mistaken. And during her career in IT, she has dealt with solutions on-prem and in the cloud, and now she's helping everyone uh, to get started. So a little bit more on the IT Pro team, which is amazing because like this, we cover everyone. Uh, Morgan, developer engagement for the IT Pro team. Um, and uh, sorry, Morgan is a developer. <laughs> engagement PMM, I was on the wrong line, uh, passionate about empowering developers around the globe and in her spare time she's hiking. You should come here, Morgan. We have so many beautiful trails. Reading a good book, hanging with her dogs, which is a, a good thing to do. I don't know if anyone saw the animal cam. We have actually an animal webcam running on the Build website. Uh, Terence, Terence Tang, he's uh, working as a developer engagement for Azure, focused on analytics, insights, data infrastructure, passionate about community building, and very excited to engage with everyone in this build. And Desiree, 
works in Azure Developer Engagement as well. But I know her from way, be, you know, way long time ago from her time as a uh, Microsoft MVP Community Manager. I was an MVP for a long time before, and Desiree was kind of managing, uh, well, was managing my group, not kind of. And so uh, she wanted me and uh, also from me and from her to give a shout out to everyone who's an MVP, who was an MVP, who is be going to be an MVP. Uh, the MVP program is awesome, so check it out. All right, so housekeeping. This session will be recorded and we will be posting that uh, later, so uh, keep an eye on that. If you have questions, use the chat window because we have all the moderators there and they are going to be able to answer that. I want to point you to the code of conduct. Okay, we are very strict with that. We don't tolerate harassment. We don't tolerate uh, basically any violation of code of conduct. Uh, you will be kicked out if you do violate that. So don't do it. Okay, we keep a, a very clean event. I was moderating a lot of sessions and I was so happy to see everybody was keeping super clean, super professional. And this is amazing. The Microsoft community, I'm so impressed by, by you all. So let's continue uh, to do that. And so for the Microsoft Learn module, you are going to join me at this AKMS. Uh, this is ak.ms slash learn slash intro Azure. And when you do that, <clears throat> what you will see is a window looking like that. All right, core cloud services introduction to Azure. So what is that? Well, this is a part of Microsoft Learn. Microsoft Learn is our free learning experience. You log in there with a with an account, all right? It can be here, I'm logged in, as you can see, with my Microsoft account, but you could be logged in uh, with uh, Hotmail, Live.com, uh, Outlook.com, which is more modern these days. Uh, you could uh, even have associate another, you know, uh, provider with uh, this account here, and then you can log in. So this is not an Azure account. That's re the really cool thing with Microsoft Learn is that you can actually do those um, those modules without having to have a, uh, a, an Azure account per se. So you're not going to use credits or anything if you do those modules. This is important to underline. We'll show you the sandbox later and how it works. So when you go into Microsoft Learn, you're going to be presented here with a number of options, and those are what we call learning paths. Learning paths. It's a collection of modules if you want. And for example, here we have the Azure Fundamentals Learning Pass, nine hour and 48 minutes of learning. This is awesome. And that's going to prepare you for an exam, which is called AZ 900. And this exam is the Azure Fundamentals exam. And I really recommend uh, to take this learning pass. It is a, 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 a guided, structured learning if you want. So a few things that you're going to notice here, is that you have a few modules, all right? Cloud concepts, uh, creating an Azure account. So we really start at the beginning. Core cloud services, introduction to Azure. That's the one we are going to run together. And then you have more things about the Azure portal, about Azure compute, data storage, networking, security. So basically everything which is interesting and important for you to go into AZ 900. And if you want to take the AZ 900 uh, exam, here you go. Uh, you have the possibility to do so. You can take it in person in a, a registered learning center. You have a few in your country, in your uh, location. You can check this out on this page. Uh, or if you want, you can also take it at home because right now we know that going out of the house is a little bit difficult. And there are possibilities to take it at home, your own webcam. They check your surroundings to make sure that you're not, that you don't have a, uh, you know, a cloud system architect uh, cheating and, and telling you the answers. And then you pass the exam and it's a multiple choice exam. It, it is, uh, I will tell you, I took it in December last year. It is harder than I thought. Um, and I was really happy that I went through the learn modules because it really helped me to, to understand a few things, especially around billing and support and things like that. So uh, it is really, uh, really cool to do that. All right, so when you are in there and you decide to do a, a, a module, you see that those modules are assigned a number of XP, or XP experience points, okay? So it is a gamification, and then you can actually uh, gain some levels, you can gain some experience points, and you can also uh, gain some cool badges. So basically you can show that 
to uh, your uh, boss, to your manager, to your colleagues, and you can kind of show off and say, hey, how many experience points do you have? Because you see, I have a lot. And um, so that's, uh, that's kind of a cool uh, gamification of all that. And uh, so let's, uh, I think at this point, we understand how learn is working. So let's go into this module. And as you can see, we, you have a number of things here going on. So we are going to get started directly at the introduction. All right, and here you see uh, an introduction to the cloud and to Azure. And so, yes, the cloud is uh, all buzzing with <laughs> buzzwords, uh, scale, elasticity, microservice, blockchain. All right, because these days, you if you want, you know, venture capitalist money, you need to have blockchain. Uh, but it is really not a fad. It is really growing so much, and it is exciting to see actually uh, the growth. Um, first of all, a lot of really big companies use Azure. Um, Ninety percent of Fortune 500 companies run on the Microsoft Cloud, um, and uh, Azure is pretty much everywhere on the globe. It's very global. We have something like 61 regions. We have like two regions in Switzerland, for example. Uh, why is it important to have regions close? to your users for multiple reasons. First of all, so that you can reduce the latency uh, of uh, you know your users actually asking the um, uh, co calling the service right because we even at Microsoft we still cannot go faster than the speed of light so we are going to reduce the distance and that's going to reduce the latency so that's one thing another thing is that maybe sometimes you want to keep data in a specific location I know that in Switzerland this is very important for our companies financial companies uh, banking insurances etc to have their uses data in Switzerland. There are some rules and regulations around that. And so if you want to be compliant, you need to have that. Also, another another reason which is uh, which makes it good to have uh, data in multiple locations is that if something happens, let's say uh, in Geneva, which is one of the uh, regions in Switzerland, then we are going to take over uh, with a copy of the data in Zurich. And it's still in Switzerland, but it is far away enough that we can hope that whatever affected Geneva, maybe they had an electricity outage, maybe there was a big thunderstorm or something like that. In some regions, you have earthquakes, you have fires. I mean, you can imagine that it can be a problem. Uh, then we are going to fail over to another region. So having many regions is quite uh, interesting and quite important. In this module, we are going to understand more about Azure. I already gave you a little bit of an introduction now, and we are going to deploy and configure a web server. And this is why I'm so excited about this session, because um, even though we are going to work in a sandbox without you having actually paid for a Microsoft Azure account or without even having a free Azure account, if you go to azure.com slash free, you can create a free Azure account. But here you don't even need that, and yet, you will be able to publish a website and to access this website and to show your family what you actually achieved. So this is really cool. Um, we are going to do that and we are going to deploy and configure here a WordPress um, website. And uh, like this, you will see uh, exactly how it works. We are going to learn also how you can scale up your website so that you have more power. We'll understand the difference between scale up, scale out. Uh, and then we'll use Azure Cloud Shell to interact with the web server. So uh, a lot of this demo is going to happen here in the Azure portal, but some of the demo is also going to happen in the Cloud Shell. So I have here a Cloud Shell open. And as you can see, uh, this is a, a cloud, uh, this is a shell environment inside the web browser. I can use Bash or PowerShell to type things. Here in the demo, we are going to use a Bash. And uh, inside there, you can type, for example, AZ, and this is the Azure command line interaction. It's a full blown environment. You have also a file system, so you can do some Git uh, clone directly into your web browser here. And this is backed by some machines in Azure, so it's really uh, interesting and cool. And the rest of the, of the demo we'll do in the Azure portal. I'll give you an intro of the portal uh, a little bit later and I'll show you some, some real things going on. All right, so at this point, if you are ready, first of all, make sure that you are logged in with, uh, you know, an account here and uh, make sure that you take a note of the account. If you have multiple accounts like me, it can be a little bit confusing. So make sure you make a note of this account. And uh, here, as you can see, I'm logged into the same account in Edge uh, as in this window here, and that's going to help us. 
So let's move on to the next um, the next step here, the next unit. What is Azure? Azure is Microsoft Cloud Computing Platform, uh, which always strikes me as very funny because it is Azure. Azure in French means blue, and uh, yet we are talking about the cloud. And so, you know, if the sky is blue, you don't have clouds. But nonetheless, it's a great name. I love uh, this name. And Azure has been expanding very fast. It is really awesome. We have a lot of really cool initiative also around uh, being green, you know, saving power and everything, which is, of course, uh, uh, you know, a topic of interest when you are in the cloud. So a lot of good initiatives. Uh, those small videos, we have a couple of small videos in the module. I'm going to let you check them out on your own. I don't want to uh, play them here over, you know, the, the stream, but check them out. And so a few definitions. Cloud computing is interesting from a financial standpoint. It's a, it's a different way to pay for your resources. Like for example, if you have your own data server in your enterprise and suddenly you notice that, oh no, it's, uh, you know, I, I need to scale up uh, or scale out, I would say, or, or even scale up as well. I need more power. Then you're going to order maybe another data server and you have to advance the money, of course. So it's what we call a capital expenditure. You pay in advance for a hardware that you don't know yet how you're going to use it. Okay, you don't know if you're going to use it to its full capacity. Uh, you don't uh, really know what kind of uh, capacity you need in advance because what's going to happen in six months, in one year, in, in five years, okay? And so on the other hand, if you go to the cloud, <clears throat> what's going to happen is that this is operational expenditure, OPEX. Uh, it means that you pay as you go. And if you need a lot of power, you're going to pay more, but probably if you need a lot of power, a lot of bandwidth, etc., it also means that you have a lot of users and so you're going to make more money. So at the end, you're going to pay for, your, for that, uh, which is good for you. Uh, but on the other hand, if you have a property which is uh, barely attracting anybody because maybe you haven't promoted enough yet, or maybe, I don't know, there is a, a low in the uh, in the demand, you know, airlines right now, etc. Uh, you can imagine, then uh, being in the cloud is cool because when you don't use a resource, then you're not going to pay for it. Uh, also, in the cloud, you have some generous free tiers. Uh, so the free account, I already mentioned that, azure.com slash free. But if you also uh, go to some services like Azure Functions, even App Service, we have some free options which are interesting for you. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, you don't have to maintain the infrastructure yourself, so it's going to remove some of the headaches from you because if something breaks, you don't have to physically go to your data center and replace it. We have people who do that for you. Uh, security also, Azure is extremely secure. Your data is encrypted. Uh, you have uh, HTTPS, TLS, SSL, all those acronyms around security. Single sign-on, you know, Azure Active Directory in order to manage the identity and all that. But also from a physical standpoint, it is super secure because we literally have no one walking on the floor most of the time. They only go there when something needs to be replaced. And those are Microsoft employees. Uh, the security is extremely strict. We don't even disclose our data center location publicly. So there is a lot of security security, it's virtually impossible that somebody goes there in person and steal a server with your data on it. That just doesn't happen. Okay, so this is quite cool. Now, a few things around uh, moving to the cloud. Why should you move to the cloud? What we notice is that people, uh, enterprises are moving to the cloud in a gradual manner. Um, and so they take advantage of something we call hybrid uh, cloud uh, migration, if you want, um, which means that they have some services in the cloud, some services on premise. So uh, one example of that, if you have super sensitive data um, and you still want to have a website accessing this data, but the website uh, needs to handle, you know, scale up, scale down, capacity, etc. You can put the website on uh, Azure, but on the other hand, the uh, database can stay on your property. You can even have some very secure encrypted transmission between those services via things like Express Route, for example, etc. Uh, so you have a lot of possibility to have a hybrid scenario, check it out. You can even run some Azure services on your own data server if you want. This is called Azure Stack, uh, and it's also an interesting offering that uh, you should probably check out. 
All right, we have a nearly limitless pool of raw compute storage and networking. Um, it is true, sometimes we see some, you know, difficulties in capacity because we have so much demand, but in general, really Azure works well. We have few outages. And again, when we have an outage in one data center, uh, if you configure it properly, you're going to have some failovers into other data centers which are going to take over. So very, very uh, secure and uh, easy to, to go up and down. We have a lot of services, interesting services. For example, here they mention cognitive services. It is AI exposed as services for developers. I love cognitive services. They make for great demos, but they also they also work great in production. And so you can check it out around custom vision, around uh, speech recognition, etc. And we have a lot of services here. They say over 100 services. We'll see a quick image or a or kind of a snapshot a little bit uh, in the next uh, unit. Um, a lot of services and those services, I when I go into Azure and I start thinking about creating an application in Azure, it's a little bit like a kid playing with Legos, if you want, okay? You take this Lego and that Lego and you put them together and then you build something and then you add Legos. And those services are exactly like that. It's uh, it's about, okay, I need to have some data. So do I want some Cosmos DB, which is a NoSQL option, or do I want some relational database, a SQL option? Uh, do I want uh, to have maybe some storage, okay? And then you connect them together. And then do I want to have some computation? So maybe I need an Azure function, a serverless Azure function. It's a way to run code in the uh, in the cloud, but without having to worry about infrastructure. And then I need to connect those together. And so we have something called Event Grid, for example, or we have Cosmos database triggers. When something happens in Cosmos DB, then the uh, function is going to be executed. And then maybe you're going to send that to a mobile device via uh, notification hub, for example, the Azure notification hub, which allows you to send notifications to, uh, you know, iOS, Android, Windows devices, even the Baidu devices, etc. And maybe you're, you want to also uh, save that to a document, or maybe you want to send an email, and for example, you have Logic Apps, which help you to do that, etc., uh, etc. Et so you compose your services, and then you build your application this way. So it's quite exciting. Uh, here in the next uh, unit, we have my, my good friend and colleague, Sonia Kuff here, who is giving you a, a, an introduction to Azure. I will let you check this video on your own. But here is a picture I was hinting at. It's a, a, a snapshot, if you want, of all the services we have. We keep adding services all the time. Uh, my favorite services, <clears throat> I would say, uh, they go about storage accounts. Storage, you always need storage. Storage is extremely cheap. It's easy to use. Uh, and it's basically a fundamental base for my other services. I love Azure Functions. I build a lot of Azure Functions these days to automatically process uh, changes in my documents, etc. Um, that's really cool. Logic Apps, I discovered Logic App. I'm a developer, all right? And so I love code, but I have to say Logic Apps, is, it's a low code solution. It's a solution where you don't really type a lot of code. You can still type code if you want, but mainly you're going to connect uh, connectors together, actions together in a block way. And, and this is really exciting to do so. And uh, you're going to uh, have uh, some some really cool actions. Uh, if you do that, for example, here is an example of Logic App. Here uh, you can see here in the web portal, I created this Logic App. I can edit it, and then you can basically uh, here create using a visual designer some actions. You have branches, you have ifs and else, you have some for loops. So you have all kinds of things which are really cool. Um, of course, around the web app services, my own website is running in an app service. And so here, if I take a look at my dashboard, you may wonder what I'm doing here. This is the Azure portal, and this is a dashboard. Dashboards, you can create a number of dashboards, and uh, you can then add some shortcuts if you want. So this is like my home on, uh, on Azure. And if I go into my own website, which is running here, uh, you see that I have some data, so I have some information. Everything is instrumented. You're going to get tons of information. Uh, here I have a few 500 errors. I will need to go and check what's going on here. But uh, I see the data in, data out. And I can always take those items and put them in my dashboard. So for example, I'm going to take here the data in graph and pin it. And I'm going to take here the number of requests. And I want to keep an eye on those uh, 500 errors here. And so if I go to the dashboard now, 
uh, and refresh, you will see that those um, are going to be pinned here. They were a little bit further down. And then after that, I can compose my dashboard. So I can click here the edit button and I can move things around. For example, I can say, all right, I want to move this graph here. I want to make it maybe a little bit smaller. And let's take this one here and let's make it a little bit smaller as well. And then when I'm done customizing, I have my image here and you see that they are correlated. So it's cool. I, I can see what's going on. So a lot of things here in uh, app services, which is what we are going to deploy later. Uh, you have also a lot of features around uh, for example, authentication authorization, you can set identity here uh, and manage identity on your website if you want people to log into your, your website, for example. We handle backups, all right, so you don't have to worry about that. You can set up custom domains if you want to have, um, like for example, in that case, it's running under galasoft.ch, so it's a custom domain. Uh, I have a certificate for that, so I have HTTPS. Uh, I can also scale up and scale down. So if I click here, we'll see that a little bit later in the module as well. I can choose another another plan. What is a plan? It's basically telling me, all right, you're going to have uh, here 1.75 gigabyte of RAM. And uh, if I click here to see a little bit uh, more details, uh, you have custom domains are included. For example, uh, we have traffic manager, we have uh, 50 gigabytes of disk storage included, but I can also decide, all right, at this point, I want to go to a bigger one because I have some capacity issues, and so I can decide to uh, scale up. Scale out, on the other hand, this is slightly different. It means that you can configure that so that if you reach a certain threshold, a certain rule, automatically we are going to provide you an additional web server and maybe a third one and maybe a fourth one. And since you pay for what you actually consume, it's quite interesting because it's going to tell you, all right, if you have a lot of traffic, you're going to pay us a little bit more, but it also means that you have more revenue because you have more uh, eyeballs on your website. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, you um, have less traffic, then we are going to scale down and then you're not going to pay as much. And so you can configure manual, manual scaling or you can even do a custom auto scale where you can define some rules. And so this is uh, quite interesting for you. Um, a few other things which are very interesting in, um, in uh, app services, um, the monitoring is really super interesting. I use that all the time. So you have a few options. First of all, there is application insights here. Application Insight is going to um, automatically check out what's going on in your code, and it's also going to uh, show you some custom events. So you can also instrument your code. Um, here you have also some other monitoring solutions. For example, you can have logs. And if I go into the logs here, you see that uh, logs right now is turned off but I can turn it on. It's going to turn on for uh, 12 hours. I turn on with information and I'm going to save that. And as soon as the logs are turned on, I can either download them from uh, FTP, which is a little bit clunky, or I can log into my log stream here. And what's going to happen is that it's going to show me what's going on in my website in real time. So if I go here now and log into my website, all right, it is uh, loading, website is coming up, and here I see some logs information which are coming up. Those are custom logs that I added in my uh, in my uh, ASP.NET website, but you could have also uh, all kinds of custom events coming up. So it's quite interesting to keep an eye on what's going on, <clears throat> what's going on in your website. Uh, you have metrics, you have all kinds of things uh, that you can monitor, so that makes things super, super convenient. So it's one of my favorite services. We have tons of services here. If I go back to the uh, docs here, tons of services described. And if you want to get started, if you go to the Azure portal uh, with, uh, for example, a free Azure account and you click on this button here, this is a create a resource button, all right? Click here, it's going to take you to uh, the uh, to the getting started page and here you have always uh, some uh, quick starts and tutorials so you can click here for example for the web apps and it's going to help you by showing you some short five minutes six minutes videos some short exercises that you can do for example my first node.js application my first php application first asp.net core application etc you have tutorials you have all kinds of links so that makes it really interesting 
and uh, easy to get started, I would say. So we have those for all services, Kubernetes, you see we have storage, I mentioned storage before, we have Azure Cosmos DB, which is this global uh, database, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take a quick look at Azure Cosmos DB because it's quite an exciting service. Cosmos DB is a, a database, all right? So here I can create one, um, but instead of creating one, I will check if I have one available to see because like this, we are not going to lose uh, any time with that. So here, for example, I have an instance of Cosmos DB that I'm using for demos. And this instance is going to run globally or to be available globally. So how does it work? Um, for example, I can go here and replicate data globally. And I will say, all right, I want my uh, data. Here it is in Eastern US. It's good, but it's only one region. It's a little bit it makes me a little bit uneasy because first of all, it's far away from me in Europe. And second of all, um, if something happens in Eastern uh, US here, which I don't hope, but you never know, there can be a thunderstorm and then they run out of electricity. Then suddenly my data is unavailable for a while. What I can do here is put a copy in Western US. I can put a copy down there in Sao Paulo. Uh, here we can put a copy in uh, South Africa right now. For me, because I'm a Microsoft employee, I cannot do that right now because we are reserving capacity for our first responder for emergency systems. Um, but for you as a user, you can actually do that here. It's a free subscription. I'm not paying for it. So that's why I see that. Uh, I can put one in Australia. Why not? I can put one here in Korea, etc. And of course, I don't want to forget Western Europe, right? This is close to where I am. And then once this is done and once I save, it's going to start replicating the data. And this is really exciting because um, you also have a free tier in Cosmos DB. And so when you create a new Cosmos DB account, you can actually uh, say, all right, I want to use a free tier. And that's going to give you uh, quite a lot of uh, capacity, quite a lot of bandwidth. And then if you exceed those free values, then you're going to start paying. But it allows you to get started. And maybe if you have a small website that you want to power, uh, but this website is used by people around the globe, that can be a good solution like this. You reduce the latency. Uh, we have a lot of interesting metrics, so you can check the metrics here, and we are going to guarantee you quite a lot of things. Like, for example, we guarantee below 10 milliseconds for a read operation, and we guarantee also below 10 milliseconds for write operation. So in that case, I'm going to write, for example, here in Western Europe, and then my data is going to be replicated worldwide. I can totally decide how the data is replicated. I have options to do so. Uh, we also have an SLA uh, service level agreement on availability. You see that we guarantee 99.999%. It means that we guarantee you that the database will not be out of service for more than six minutes per year. OK, that's huge. And of course, if you want to have even more uh, availability, then you can replicate your data. And like this, you even reduce the risk that one of these databases will be uh, out of service. So we have a lot of things. If we exceed those values for some reason, if we uh, have less than 99.999% or if we have more than 10 milliseconds latency, then you are going to get some money back. So it's quite interesting. All right, so those are just a few services that we have uh, on Azure. We have tons of documentation about those, so check them out. Databases, VM, virtual machines, right? It's a good place to get started because it's easy, but then you want to move to other things like platform as a service, PaaS, what we call things like app service, for example, that we are going to check later. DevOps, also interesting. If you do continuous integration, continuous deployment, you're going to love it. If you don't do continuous integration and continuous deployment, you should ask yourself why, because it's really important to have automated uh, deployment, automated tests on your um, on your uh, applications. And so we have Azure DevOps. We also have integrations with GitHub Actions. So let's go into the exercise. And so what's going to happen here is that you're going to see here a sandbox area. And here it says sandbox activated because I cheated. I went into this uh, exercise a little bit before to rehearse so that I'm prepared, but you're going to have to activate the sandbox. And so uh, quite important, make sure to make a note of the account that you are logged in here. Here I'm, worked, I'm logged into my Microsoft account. 
should be the same account that you are logged in with uh, your uh, Microsoft Edge here. And uh, it's going to give you a sandbox. We have uh, a maximum of 20 sandbox per day. All right. It's quite generous, but it is still limited because we have to basically reserve capacity for other people as well. And the sandbox is going to act to be activated in that case for more than three hours. Now I still have one hour and 12 minutes to go, which is fine. We have plenty of time to finish the exercise. And then we go down. And then we have what is an app service. And by the way, I just want to mention again, if you have some issues with the sandbox, make sure to uh, ask in the Q&A and our moderators are going to help you. <clears throat> All right, so what is an app service? An app service is a, a, a web server as a platform. It's going to help you run HTTP based applications. It can be, for example, a web API, a website, a mobile backend, things like that. Anything that you want to access via HTTP. And then you can deploy those applications to your app service. You create your applications using, for example, .NET, ASP.NET, or .NET Core, ASP.NET Core. You know ASP.NET Core is super exciting because it's going to run on Linux or Windows, so you can select. And we have web servers running on Windows and on Linux in Azure, so you can select. Some people prefer to work with Linux. Actually, most of the web is running on Linux, and so it can be interesting. Some people prefer to go on Windows because you have other advantages, so here you have a choice. We also support Java, we support Ruby, we support Node.js, uh, PHP, Python. So you have really a choice to create your uh, applications. Like I said, we support Windows and Linux. And then you can either start from scratch with an empty app service that then you deploy an application to, or you can start with some predefined applications, predefined templates if you want. That's what we will do in the exercise uh, using WordPress. So the yeah, Microsoft Azure Marketplace, it's a location where you can find all kinds of things. And so if you go to a portal, whatever portal, and type something, for example, uh, let's say app service, why not? That's what we want to do. All right, then I will see um, here in the marketplace some options that I have. And if I click on see all, it will take me inside the marketplace uh, per se. And then I'm going to be able to see uh, what's going on here and to uh, select, for example, an application, for example, a WordPress template, which is the one that we will use now. So you have a choice here, a little bit slow to load at the moment, but it's OK because we'll do that uh, later in the exercise. OK, so the first thing we are going to do to host everything that we have is create a resource group. And resource group is uh, important because it's a grouping of resources. It makes it easy to manage your resources. Uh, so for example, if you assign some permission to your resource group, then those permissions are going to be cascaded to the resources that the resource group contains. Uh, if you delete a resource group, it's going to delete all the resources. So it makes it easy to manage uh, what you want to manage the life cycle of your application. Now, in this case, in this exercise, the resource group is going to be select to be created automatically. So you're not going to be uh, uh, to, to need to do that and it's going to have this ID here and so let's keep that in mind for later but otherwise if you start from scratch you're going to have uh, in your own Microsoft account you're going to create the resource group at first and then you're going to select a, a region for that so here we are also selecting a number of regions for this exercise because again we share capacity with a lot of people so make sure to select one of those I'm going to be selecting Western Europe because this is close to where I am located but if you are somewhere else uh, around the globe then you can select that then we are going to create the WordPress website. So like I said, you can actually start from scratch, but here we are going to get started with WordPress. WordPress is a content management system. It's a popular blogging platform which has exploded to more uh, content management. So all kinds of websites are hosted on WordPress these days. You have tons of, of templates for your web application. And so we are going to sign into the Azure portal and make sure to click on this link because it's going to sign you in with a, a special account. This is a learn uh, account on a Microsoft uh, Learn Studio. And so make sure to do that. And like this, you're going to see exactly the correct permission. So it is loading. It's uh, like I mentioned before, a little bit slow to load, but things are happening. OK, we see the uh, Microsoft Azure logo, meaning that things are going on. And so I'm going to be inside the portal and inside the portal, 
Here you see it says lbunion at microsoft.com. That's me. Feel free to send me email if you like this or to send emails to Christopher Manu if you don't like what I'm showing you. Um, and uh, here it says Microsoft Learn Sandbox, and that's exactly what you want to see. You want to make sure that you see that. Now, if you are logged in with the wrong account, you may see here a, a message telling you no subscriptions. I don't see any subscriptions, and that means that you're logged in with the wrong account. So uh, make sure here to, uh, to make sure that you see the Microsoft Learn Sandbox and that you don't have any error message. And now we are going to create a resource. So let's go into this button. It says create a resource. Sounds like a good place to start. Let's do that. And by the way, everything is detailed here. You have screenshots and everything. All right. So that's what you can do. And here in the uh, new box, we are going to select WordPress, all right? And you see you have two options. You have WordPress or WordPress on Linux. Here we are going to choose WordPress on Windows, but uh, you can choose WordPress of Linux on Linux later on to try things out if you prefer. So here you have some information. We're in the marketplace, information about what's going on. Let's click on Create. And that's going to show me a very familiar view. If you have already created service in Azure, it always looks a little bit the same. You have a few things that you need to do. You're going to select here a name for your application. So let's call this My Amazing WordPress. And this name needs to be unique because at the end, it's going to be a URL. So you can show that to your family. It's going to be myamazingwordpress.azurewebsites.net. All right, so the name must be unique. And this is why you have a check here saying, yes, this is a unique name. If I type test, I'm pretty sure that it's going to tell me that the app name test is not available. Yes, somebody was uh, faster than me here. So let's go back here, my amazing word. Press uh, dot Azure websites dot net. And for example, what you could do is put your initials in front like this. It increases the chances that it is unique. For the subscription, you want to see concierge subscription. This is a special subscription, which means that you don't have to pay for it. All right. The special subscription that you're going to use here in uh, in here. And for the resource group, we are going to use an existing resource group. We are going to use this resource group that we saw before. So again, don't create a new resource group because in this particular subscription, you're not allowed, all right? We have some limitations because it is a free one that we give you for a certain time. So make sure to choose use existing and then to choose this uh, resource group with this GUI ID, with this unique ID here. Now for the database provider, you could select for WordPress Azure database for MySQL, but we are going to select here MySQL in app, which means that the MySQL is going to be a part of the WordPress service that you deploy. There are a lot of advantages in using Azure Database for MySQL. For example, you're going to have automated backups, you're going to have uh, also automated scale up, scale down, all kinds of thing, patching and all that. But here you don't have a permission to do that in this particular exercise, because again, this is a free account that we are giving you uh, just for a limited time. Uh, so be careful uh, uh, about that. And then we are going to create a service plan. And so for the service plan, the service plan defines what your application is going to be allowed to consume. So let's go here into the service plan. You see that I have a, a service plan which is selected. It says new plan. I'm going to click here. And uh, right now, actually, it tells me that it is an S1 plan, which is not so good because it means I'm going to have to pay for it. So I'm going to create a new plan here. And inside of uh, S1, oh, actually, we are not going to create a new plan. I'm sorry about that. We're going to go back. We are going to start with that, but then we are going to downgrade this plan to an F1. And F1 is a plan which is free. So it's great for development. It means that you're not going to pay anything. And then after that, when you are ready here, you can click on create and that's going to start the validation of what you entered. So it's going to check again that everything is proper and correct, that you have all the permissions. And here, as you can see, I have some validation uh, error around this service plan. So the service plan is a problem. And like I said, we are going to downgrade that. So let's go back here to uh, create a new plan. I'm going to enter here 
my plan for now it's not super important here because it's local i'm going to select the region so like i said we have a few regions that we can use so i'm going to go into western europe here which is close to me and then we are going to take for the pricing we are going to take this free account this is the one that i'm actually allowed to create so the free account is located into dev test all right this is a, a development account free here and here you see i have one gigabyte memory which should be enough for what we are doing here 60 minutes per day of compute time compute time is really when the uh, app service is running right so let's uh, check that up let's select this so now we have my plan we have my amazing wordpress i'm going to create now and now hopefully uh, everything will work fine so if you select s1 it's not going to work that was a good demo here uh, like a failed demo indeed um, and now you see that the deployment is in progress so how can we see what's going on you can always click here on the link or you can click here on the bell as well. You see this bell is a notification area. It tells me what's going on right now. So you can have multiple deployments in parallel. I could have, for example, a Cosmos DB database or a MySQL database being deployed at the same time. Uh, right now we are going to just uh, wait until this is complete. It takes just a few minutes to deploy everything. And then when we are ready, then we are going to be able to go into the actual thing. So while this is going on, Let's go back to my own portal. I can show you a few additional things. I'll keep an eye on this one here for a moment. Oh, you see that it's changing now, so you can actually follow up as it goes. Right here, we have uh, some work, some, some uh, server farm created. It means the app service is uh, getting ready and all that. And here in the portal, um, I have I have tons of resources. So a few other things you can do in the portal here. You can expand here and you have your favorite, your categories. You can add different categories here to help you keep an eye. You have the cost management because once you have an actual account that you pay for, you want to also keep an eye on what you are paying. And so here we are going to show you what you pay for. We are going to show you also some recommendations from time to time. Like how can you actually save money maybe you have a virtual machine that you don't use that you can uh, that you can uh, delete or maybe that you can just switch off from time to time um, things like that and um, if i go down for example to sql sql is also interesting as a as a database so here i have a number of sql database and uh, if i go into one of those databases, then you can see how it works so we saw cosmos db before now we see a sql database we have uh, not much activity going on but it's still uh, definitely running again i'm going to keep an eye on that to see if it's uh, if it's uh, processing and uh, here we can uh, configure things like for example the advanced data security now this is a super feature of azure sql it means that it's going to scan my data from time to time and it's going to warn me if something is going uh, if something is not configured properly for example if i didn't configure a firewall or if i have some uh, some uh, you know cross scripting attacks for example or some um, some uh, vulnerabilities of any kind is going to send me some emails as well uh, so very interesting to have that and again this is part of our platform as a service offering uh, what else can i show you i can show you maybe an Azure function. So let's go uh, into app services. App services, uh, you know, an Azure function, it's serverless, but it's actually running on a web server somewhere. So it is under this category. And so here I have a number of things that I can do um, in a serverless manner. For example, I can deploy some code here to the cloud without having to actually manage uh, the uh, server and so here I have a number of functions which are going to be triggered for example this function here is going to be triggered via an HTTP call but I have other uh, functions here which are triggered here for example via an event grid meaning if something happens for example in a storage account via event grid which is one of our Azure services is going to trigger the function and then some code can be executed for example maybe you're going to create a thumbnail for your application uh, maybe you're going to extract some geolocation information for your application etc all right just in time the deployment is complete so if you're not so far yet you know give it maybe a couple more minutes i'm going to move on so that we progress so here you have a notification you can click here or you can always go to this resource from the notification pane let's click here 
And that's going to show me here the uh, amazing WordPress uh, control panel, if you want. This is my dashboard. It's my, uh, you know, my my deck, my space deck, because if you want to be in a, you know, in a, uh, in a spaceship here, and here you start seeing something. We have a little bit data in, data out. It's because the service was validated and all that. And here you have the URL. And you see this URL, it says my amazing WordPress dot Azure websites dot net. OK, so this is the, the link that you can actually give to your mom and say, hey, look, mom, I'm a web developer in the cloud. I did create something. All right. If I click here, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to start WordPress. But of course, WordPress is not configured uh, at this time. So it's going to show me the, the first view, which is going to be the login view. I'm going to create a user and a password, uh, like an admin user and a password. And then you're going to be presented with what may be familiar for some of you, which is the, the view where you can actually create a post on WordPress. And then only that's when you call your mom and you say, hey, look, I, I'm a web developer in the cloud. So here we have the WordPress. I'm going to select English because that's what I'm speaking right now. But you see you have a number of options. Then I can create a site title. This is my amazing WordPress. I think I said that before. We have uh, a password which was generated here. I'm going to uh, type a, a username here. I'm going to make sure to copy this password. Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't join me here. I'm going to add my, uh, my uh, Microsoft.com thing and then I'm going to install WordPress, so this is basically going on. But what you see here is basically WordPress running on my app service. My app service is already configured and running properly because otherwise I wouldn't even see that page. Um, and uh, here we are. Now we have the uh, username and password. So now I can go and type this, type, uh, paste the password that I copied before. And right now I should be able to log into the WordPress dashboard. I was running my website on WordPress before, so this is familiar for me. And now I can go into posts and I can actually have uh, a post. I actually see I have already a Hello World post. That's awesome. Let's click on view. And this is going to start my WordPress instance. And as you can see, I'm using a totally standard template, but then this is where you can get crazy and go and change the template, change the view. You know, you can even create a custom template for your application, etc., uh, etc. Et so this is really cool. All right, so we have completed that step. This is great. Few things uh, that are worth mentioning. We can check our work. It's going to actually log into the sandbox, make sure that you have done what you were supposed to do, and it's going to give you your experience points. Then you can move to the next uh, unit. And uh, here we can do a few things. So I'm already in the portal. We have already talked about those uh, graphs and things. Let's talk a little bit about the scaling. So again, I told you we started here with uh, an app service plan, which is F1 free. But once you are ready to go in production and you are running into your own account, maybe you this is the time for you to start scaling up. So you can scale out. And here it's a free plan, so I cannot actually scale out. It's not included in this tier. Uh, scale out meaning that we will add more web server to handle the capacity when needed, and then we scale down when you don't need it. Okay. Scale up, on the other hand, means that you're going to say, all right, now I have my website running. I want to start actually going into production, so I can change here to production, and I can select, for example, S1. That's what I'm using to run my own personal website where uh, it's going to cost me approximately 73 US dollars per month. So I have an idea of what it's going to cost. Of course, these, co these costs vary a little bit based on uh, how much data you have, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to know more about the pricing, you can always go into the Azure pricing calculator here, and this is going to show you uh, a lot of information based on what you uh, you, what you want to use. So here you have a choice. You have virtual machines, you have app service, which is what we are running right now. I added the app service here and then I can say, all right, maybe I'm going to run it for, uh, I, I want to have here a, um, let's see, let's take the standard plan S1, uh, one instance running 700 and, uh, 730 hours. And th that's how we calculate those 73 US dollars that we saw before. You can change the region as well. Some regions are sometimes a little bit more costly than others. For example, if I put it in Switzerland, it's going to cost me $5 more, but of course it's closer to my users. So maybe it's worth it, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's how you find out how much it's going to cost. All right, so that was kind of the scale up section of this area. Now let's talk about Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell is an amazing 
feature that you have in your web browser is going to allow you to work with uh, console applications and you have a choice when you interact with Microsoft Azure. You can do it in the portal. That's what we did before. You can, uh, for example, start Ubuntu. All right. I have a Windows subsystem for Linux, a WSL. Here I'm still on WSL 1, but I can already start Ubuntu on Windows and then I can say AZ and that's going to start the uh, Azure command line interaction a little bit small. Let me scroll here a little bit. It's going to start the Azure command line interaction uh, and have everything which is installed. So here I'm running bash locally. You can also connect via PowerShell if you prefer. And here in the cloud shell, now here in this particular box, you have a limited environment. So it is showing me only bash. But if you go, when you are logged into your account, your actual Microsoft account, and go to shell.azure.com, this is where you see the full experience. I can select here a tenant, and then uh, I can uh, switch to PowerShell if I prefer. So you can totally run PowerShell here in uh, this. I'm not going to switch here to avoid disturbing things, but this is what you can do. A few other things to mention about PowerShell, you have also a file system, so you can do a git clone if you want. Uh, if I do ls here, you see that I have some things. For example, I have a deploy.sh. This is a script, a bash script. And even better, you have a version of code, a Visual Studio code running here into your uh, web browser. So I can do code dot code in this folder and then it's starting here visual studio code directly in my web browser i don't even need to have it installed and then i can go and see what i have in my cloud shell i can go into this uh, bash script the deploy.sh and then here you see that i can totally go and edit this script directly in my web browser this is pretty awesome i can do all kinds of things from here i can create some resources i can deploy resources i can monitor resources from the cloud shell so here in the exercise what we are going to do inside this small sandbox here you are logged into your actual the same account that uh, that you have when you have created here the uh, the plan this blue the microsoft learn sandbox okay so let's see what we can do we are going to scroll down this is the cloud shell it tells you a little bit what you can do one thing i can do is that i can list the accounts which are connected to this instance of the cloud shell so i'm going to copy that and then paste it here inside this window i'm going to click and then it's going to show me that it has one account concierge subscription which is the learn sandbox account that's really cool if i was running that into my own account i have a lot of subscription under my account so i would see a table with everything you see that i specified output table here now that's really cool now the thing i can say is that i can say okay show me all the resource groups that i have okay so i'm going to say here easy group list and again, the output is a table. And here I have one resource group. This is a resource group that we used before. You see it's running in Western US. Uh, the resource group is in Western US, but my plan, if you remember, I created in Western Europe. And here it is in Western US because I didn't choose it. It was automatically created for me. A good practice is to put everything in the same region. So if I had done that from scratch in my own account, I would have selected Western Europe instead. All right, here you could also do AZ group create. All right, it's not going to work here because you don't have the permission. But if you try this in the free Azure account, you do AZ group create, and then it's going to create a new resource group. All right, what we can do here, we can do, let's list the resources that we have inside this resource group, which are a Microsoft.web slash site. So we are going to list all the websites that we have. So let's go and paste that. And then you're going to see, all right, I have one website running. It's my amazing WordPress. This is correct. And uh, here I have some information about what is that. It's an app. Uh, what uh, resource group does it belong to? Where does it run? It's running in Western Europe. That's correct, etc. And one thing I can do at this time, I'm going to copy here the value of the name. All right, that's going to be another name for you. And what I'm going to do, I can interact now. So I'm going to copy that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the website. And so I'm going to replace here the value of the web app name with what I just copied from the JSON before. And of course, it doesn't work because I had something else. Let me, you know what, I'm just going to do clear. Now I'm going to do clear. Let's start from scratch here. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to copy that. Let's go and paste that. And now I'm going to replace this here. And I have the amazing 
um, Windows clipboard, the, the secret clipboard here. So now I should be able to. Uh, why is it not working? Uh, it's because you need to right click and click paste. So now I have copied the correct name for my website. So now I'm going to stop it, right? I didn't run the execution yet, right? My website is up and running. I can refresh. Everything's working fine. This is great. But look, mom, I'm now an IT pro administrator. I'm going to stop my website directly in the cloud shell, all right? And now if I go over there, then suddenly it tells me, well, the website is actually not going to run anymore, all right? It just takes a moment to actually stop the website. Now it tells me 503, the service is unavailable. I have stopped my website, which also means that I'm not paying for it anymore. Now, of course, it's running on a free plan, so I'm not actually paying for it. But if you have your own website and you're very conscious about cost, when you have less uh, demand, for example, you can even stop the website completely. Your users are going to see an error. Maybe you want to find, to show a nice error message here, but basically that's how it works. We can totally restart the website. So I'm going to go here, copy that, and let's paste this. And then I'm going to do the same trick as before, where I'm going to take the name of the website. Here we go. Now I'm going to start this website again. It's also going to take just a few seconds to restart. So now it should be the, the uh, command has been executed. If I go and refresh a little bit, OK, it's taking a moment to load because the web application is starting. It take, typically takes a few seconds to start, maybe up to one minute. But then very fast, you're going to see that this website is up and running again. So you can manage your website from the portal. I could have done the same operation here if I go back to my WordPress, I can click on stop here and that's going to do the same thing that I just did. My website is again up and running, but you can also manage it via script, via command line if you prefer. All right, so we are pretty much at the end of that. I will reserve a little bit of time for questions. So here you have a knowledge check. I'm going to let you uh, check out those questions. Um, I think you already know that Azure is not a single data center located in Redmond, Washington. OK, I'm cheating here. I'm giving you the answer. Um, but basically, make sure to reserve time to check this out. You will gain more experience points. You will become an accomplished Azure developer. This is pretty awesome. Now, I want to open the floor to questions. So my dear moderators, do we have question answers? Can I uh, answer something live on the stream, possibly? Maybe Desiree, do you want to take the mic? Do we have Desiree? I don't know if we have Desiree, but uh, we had a bunch of questions around. Uh, one of them was regarding the logs. Uh, how can you uh, actually um, output your log from your application to somewhere in Azure? Yes, so the logs are going to be saved into a storage account, which is automatically created when you create pretty much any service requires some kind of storage, all right? And so when you go to the app service logs here, uh, that's going to actually be inside the storage account, but you can access them via FTP. And so you have the FTP uh, information here. And then one thing I do sometimes if I really want to connect to the logs fast and I don't actually have uh, an FTP client installed on my machine because these days you tend not to have them. I don't know if you know that, but you can actually FTP somewhere using a good old Windows Explorer. And so if I want to do that uh, here, I'm going to copy here the information. I'm going to paste that into uh, Windows Explorer, and then it's going to add me for the username and password. So of course, that's what you want to know. So for the username and password, what you can do is go into Deployment Center here. That's a good trick also. That's why you will see the, the login information. And here, of course, I'm logged in via uh, this uh, kind of things here, but uh, because I have continuous uh, automation and continuous deployment, but I can disconnect. And then if I disconnect, I will have actually an FTP information, FTP login, username and password, which is shown. And that's what you can uh, then copy. And then you can use that into the dialogue that you see here and basically log into your FTP directly in your Windows Explorer. So, so that can be useful. Uh, another possibility, 
uh, that you can do. Okay, now we see that it has disconnected. And so if I go down to FTP here and show the FTP dashboard, here you see the, uh, the, the, the username that you need to use and the password that you need to use. So that's one possibility. Uh, a few other things you can do, you can always go back to the resource group, all right? And uh, in the resource group, you uh, can uh, in the uh, in the uh, here, I mean the overview of the app service. If I click on resource group, I will see all the resources that I have here. And so if you have configured here, you see I have this cloud shell storage account. If I click here, that actually is a storage account. Well, where everything is kept, uh, which enables your website to run. So here you have a possibility to then use Storage Explorer to go and check out what is inside uh, those blobs. So you have blob containers, you have files, you have tables. Uh, and uh, if you click here, basically you're going to be able to explore that. Uh, another thing you can do, and that's probably what I would recommend, is to use Application Insight. And Application Insight is a fantastic monitoring solution that you have. And uh, if I log into my app service, for example, inside, applic inside the Application Insight instance, uh, it's going to show me a wealth of information, including all the logs. But even better, in Insight, I also have the possibility to filter those logs. So you see here, I have tons of information uh, about, for example, the application map. Application map is amazing because it shows me all the components of my application, including the performance. Like, for example, uh, here, you know, it's not set up because it's a free account. But if I go into an actual account, that's where I, where I would go. Uh, it's going to show me if I have an Azure SQL database, for example, how long does it take to go to the Azure SQL database and back. It's going to show me why you have a performance issue. It's going to show you failures. So if you have some issues because your website is not configured properly, it's going to show that to me. It's showing me also performance. So for example, how fast is my website response? And also it's going to show me the logs. And so we go back to the logs here. Uh, the logs are going to open in a window where I will have a query language. And here I am able to type some queries. For example, I can say, show me the exceptions. And it's even uh, supports some kind of IntelliSense. So it's going to pop a, a dialogue. You see, I can select here uh, exceptions where um, the app ID equals my app ID, for example, or something like that. And then it's going to show that to you. You also have some predefined, uh, predefined uh, queries. So if I click here on plus, and I go down, for example, here I have the response time trend. So I can, I can click here and it's going to give me here a view. Now I don't have result found here because it's a very new website. It's not quite set up here, but then I can go and, and change that. For example, I can say, all right, I don't want to remove the time range here. And instead I want to select the time range from here. If you're working in a, in a team, it's absolutely amazing because those queries actually have a link associated to them. So you can copy a link to the query, and then you can go to another window, paste it. The user is going to log with their uh, own account. If they have permission to see this data, this is all role-based access control, they are going to see exactly the same query with the same result. So you can easily share some information uh, with uh, your uh, IT pro people, with your developers, with your managers, etc. So hopefully this helps. Uh, really a lot, lot, lot of information around that. Do we have time for another question? Anyone, Christopher, do you have a question? Yeah, I think we have time for uh, at least one more question. Uh, Rene already um, answered to it, but I think it's an interesting one. Um, how do you uh, configure your um, app service? Uh, like the question from was from Michael, and he asked, how can I uh, deploy to Azure so the connection string used via Azure database rather than is local yes. database? Yeah, that's a great question. So you have a number of options and uh, maybe uh, the best case scenarios that I can do here is show you my actual uh, app service here, my actual website, uh, because uh, it's going to make things a little bit easier to understand because it is a proper website which is configured. So a few things you can do, you can uh, put connection string into a configuration dialog and that can be Interesting uh, because it's an easy way to configure your website. So if you go here into an app service, this is my actual website running, all right? And if I go down here, I have configuration. I can click here and this information here, the configuration here is going to be in your code available under the environment variables, okay? So here, for example, I have 
some information. And here, for example, I could uh, paste connection string, but I can also paste the connection string as an application setting if I want. Here, it's not super interesting because I don't have any connection string because I did think properly. You see what I have here? I have Galasoft Vault, okay? This is a key vault. Now, key vault is awesome. This is a place where you can keep your secrets. So for all the connection strings that you have, you can actually go into um, into secrets here, and then you can add a new secret. And I I go here confidently because I know that it's going to be uh, hidden. And basically, I can go and I can generate a new secret. So I can show you how to do that here. And I'm going to set a name, and I'm going to set the value for the secret. And everything is kept inside Key Vault in an encrypted manner. And Key Vault is then accessible, for example, from App Service from Azure Functions, it is accessible from uh, AKS, from Kubernetes services, from all kinds of services. So that's a great place to keep connection string, username, password, these kind of things. Um, the alternative option, like I mentioned, if I find my uh, dashboard again, uh, the alternative option would be uh, to use uh, connection strings directly inside the app service. It's not as secure as Key Vault, but it is also a possibility. I see that my dashboard is not totally up to date here. When you change the name, uh, etc., uh, it's going to uh, kind of break the dashboard. So if you create multiple resources multiple times, make sure to use the same names. Uh, if I was able, it's a little bit dead right now, but if I was able to go there, basically the, the dialogue you showed before, that the connection strings and the app settings dialogue. And the cool thing with app settings is that you can also have different app settings for different environments. Like, for example, if I run locally, I'm going to have some app settings locally into my ASP.NET. I'm using ASP.NET Core mostly to develop websites. Into my ASP.NET Core section, I have a JSON file where it's called application.json where I have all my settings. But then when I push to uh, the cloud to deployment via uh, either manually or via you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment, then you are going to be able to specify other values. And so I can have totally a testing database, a staging database, and a uh, production database uh, if I want to have that. Uh, here, I don't really see a, a website. Let me see if I can find an app service so that we can see that. While I'm going on, maybe we can also ask another question. Let me see if I find a good one. Oh, here we have uh, Tailwind Traders. Tailwind Traders is our demo application. If you're not familiar with it, you go to tailwindtraders.com. And this is a demo application that we have. We have also everything on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub uh, under uh, the uh, Microsoft account and look for Tailwind Traders, you will find the code and everything. So here, for example, I have a configuration and I believe that this one should be configured directly inside the uh, configuration panel into the app settings. Yes, so here we have a few configuration. For example, we have a Mongo connection string. And so I can show this connection. You see that the connection string here. I can go and edit that. And here, this is particular to this uh, web server. All right, so I could have another web server called staging where I have the same the same name for the connection string, but another value, and that's going to go to, uh, to another value. So here I have my connection string and everything. So that's a way to uh, configure and to set your app settings, okay? Great, Anything Ron. Just before the next question, I wanted to thank, we have some people who are sending us the links to their deployed uh, WordPress. Uh, nice. So it's great that some people went to uh, to the end of the learn module with you and uh, actually have deployed. Uh, That's fantastic. Their, uh, you guys are cloud developers, right? After yeah. 45 minutes, 55 minutes. That's awesome. This is cool. Uh, we have a, um, a question and we have, I think, five minutes more. Uh, we have a question from an anonymous uh, participant. Uh, if you make changes to the code, what's the time between making the change, bad change, and having it reflected across uh, your app service and across all regions if you deploy onto several regions? Yeah, yeah, this is a fantastic question. So experience made, so I use uh, I use continuous integration, continuous deployment, and um, for my website, I use Azure DevOps. Um, and uh, on some uh, solutions, I also have a, a GitHub action used to deploy uh, specifically uh, Azure Functions in my case. Um, I would say that from the moment where I commit, uh, so I usually do, I usually work like that. I commit to a branch. So I, I open a branch on my GitHub 
uh, repo, and then I make some changes, and then I test. So I will deploy that uh, via a uh, well. I, I will deploy that to a test environment. I will run it locally, make sure that everything is okay. When it's fine, I will merge my branch to my master branch. And I have a, a DevOps uh, pipeline which is watching this master branch, and you could do that with GitHub Actions as well, and which is going to detect, detect changes and then start a build. And what I do is that I have two environments: I have a staging environment and I have a testing environment, and I have a production environment, and those are. Uh, deployed in a row, but I have, because I'm using Azure DevOps, I have an approval gate in the middle, which means that I'm deploying to staging first, and then that takes typically, I would say from a commit, from a merge to master, to having everything automated into, uh, into staging, it takes, let's say, five minutes, I would say, five to six minutes, something like that. And then after that, I get an email telling me, hey, your staging is ready, you should check it out. So I'm going to try things out. And if I'm happy with that, I'm going to click the approve button. And then that's automatically going to push the same thing into production, into the production web server. And this uh, is going to take another few minutes, I would say three, four, five minutes, something like that. So it is, I would say, from, from merge to production, including testing the staging environment, which can take longer, etc. But we abstract, if we abstract that, it takes something like five to 10 minutes, something like that. Then after that, uh, if you have configured your website via CDN, etc., uh, so what you can do is, for example, deploy simultaneously to multiple regions using Azure DevOps, or you can configure uh, different things to do that in an automated manner. It's going to take another few minutes, but we are way below what would happen if you would do that in a manual way, and also we avoid errors. So definitely recommend to do that. If you're not familiar, with uh, Azure DevOps, just go to dev.azure.com and then you can create uh, a, uh, an account there and then you can get started there. This is absolutely awesome. Or you can also use, if you have a GitHub repo, you can also use GitHub Actions to do those things. So here I have an example. Um, let's see here, notifications. This is a si total side project of mine uh, that I'm working on and this is using Azure functions. And so here I have deployed uh, I have created here some pipelines. So, for example, I have a pipeline which is going to uh, watch here my Azure functions. And this is going to be connected. You see that I have a few builds. Uh, I can go and edit and see the YAML file, the configuration file. It is connected to my GitHub repo. Um, and then I have also a release pipeline. And the release pipeline is going to say, okay, once I have a build, uh, so this is my YAML here. Uh, let me show you the release pipeline because this is really uh, pretty uh, amazing and exciting. So if I click on edit here, it's going to show me what's going on. So I have, first of all, the build is going to happen. I can follow the build in the command line uh, environment directly here on Azure DevOps. Once this is created, I have specified that I want a continuous deployment. It's going to go into my staging environment. Here I have a gate where I say I want to give an approval to go to production. So it's going to go to staging automatically, but then it's going to wait. And here I could have branches. I could have a staging in Australia, a staging in US, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all working in minutes, I would say. So it's uh, it's all automated as well. That's really cool. <laughs> Uh, great, Ron. And we reach the end of our session today. All right, that's awesome. So thank you so much for participating. It, uh, you know, I'm I'm super tired because I slept something like four hours per night for the past week or something like that. Preparing build makes me really happy to see that we had a lot of people <clears throat> and that you actually did the exercises and publish your uh, WordPress. This is so fantastic. Thank you so much for participating in Microsoft Build. This was a specific format this year. I hope you liked it. We really poured our heart into Build and made it accessible to everyone around the globe. Uh, hopefully it was helpful for you. Please give us evals because like this we learn what uh, we have done right or wrong. If you like this session, my name is Laurent Bunion. If you didn't like this session, my name is Christopher Manu. And uh, please take uh, a time to feel that because it's super helpful for us. Thank you so much, moderators. Uh, Desiree, Christopher, Rene, Terence, uh, Morgan, and Sarah. I hope I didn't forget anybody uh, for taking the time. Thank you also to the technique to uh, enable a, a smooth run. And uh, please uh, keep coding and uh, try Azure because it's really awesome. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>